kinds of places in the world we know. All kinds of places that different creatures call home. There's the world of nature, where wild animals live. No cars or buildings, and only the trees are skyscrapers. Then there's the man-made world of the cities, built of concrete and steel, glass and chrome. Cities are exciting. They're crowded and noisy, with people rushing everywhere. And sometimes they're too crowded and too noisy, with people in too much of a rush. Let's journey to a land where the air is always clean and the only noise is the beautiful sound of animals talking to each other. We can't understand what they're saying, but there are some special little beings out there who can. They're called the gnomes. The animals are their neighbors. And their neighborhood is the world. This world is there, just waiting for you. So come with me to the world of the gnome. Gnomes have a language all their own, but with a little magic from one very special gnome named David, we'll be able to understand them. What? You've never seen a gnome? Well, they're all around us. Just take a closer look. Let me show you a secret world, the stuff that dreams are made of. They're little people with full-sized hearts. There's nothing to be afraid of. You may not see them, but they're right here, up each day at the crack of dawn, hurrying busily all around you before you get here and after you've gone. Oh, David, you have company calling. I thought so. Send them right in. Welcome. Come in, come in. Don't be shy. We're not very formal here. Yeah. Oh. oh, good evening. I'm David, son of the famous Tim of Uppsala. Welcome to our humble home. I'm glad you were able to make it. You must be really sympathetic to gnomes, otherwise you wouldn't be here. This, I know, is the first time you've met us, but we know you humans very well. There's some things I've been meaning to talk to you about. What's the idea of coming into our peaceful forest and blasting away with your noisy guns at every animal you see? And of course, you make the water so dirty, the fish can't live in it. And the air so full of smoke, nobody can breathe. Come on, you sleepyheads. Mice aren't supposed to sleep all the time. Are you ready for your supper? Oh, but I know it's not your fault. You're too young to do things like that. Anyhow, we gnomes wouldn't hurt a fly, and we try to help our friends when they're in trouble. I think maybe we could help you, too, if we got to know each other better. Perhaps some of our love and respect would rub off on you. Love for our fellow creatures, respect for the beautiful planet we share. Yes! That's really why I invited you here today. Isn't it time we got together? Let's try to clean things up a little bit. Here's your towel, David. Thank you. 
There are several kinds of gnomes. Most of them live in a forest like me, so we're called forest gnomes. Then there are dune gnomes that live in the sand. <coughs> this is a garden gnome. He's a regular fuss budget. Trespassers! <coughs> this busy gentleman is a house gnome. There aren't many like him. Hello. Goodbye. And lastly, we find my distant cousin, the Siberian gnome. Something below her, I'm afraid. You can see what I mean. I wouldn't call him bad-tempered, but he is a little lacking in the social graces. But I'm sure you'd like to know some more about us. <clears throat> we'll start with our weight. I weigh 300 grams. That's about 11 ounces. Uh, I usually weigh 250 grams, but lately, <laughs> say 9 ounces more or less. 15 centimeters high. That's 6 inches, or about as tall as an ice cream cone. Now I want to tell you what our daily life is like. And of course, you have to meet my wonderful family. Oh, just a minute. This charming and efficient housewife, who's 399 years old, and is still to me the most beautiful and enchanting woman in the world, is my wife, Lisa. I don't want to brag, but we do make a handsome couple, don't you think? our children, Lily and Harold. Now they're great-grandparents, and we're great-great-grandparents. Gnomes have children only once, and we always have twins. This is Swift, our faithful friend, the fox. He's always ready to carry Lisa and me anywhere in the world. I help him scratch in places he can't reach. We gnomes may be small, but we're seven times stronger than a human being. I was a swell fat, honey. Thank you. We rub noses to show our affection for each other. Yeah. Hmm. I forgot to clean out the mouse basket. This is our watchman, Cricket. His name is Corky. Ah, we have Skylark eggs for supper, my favorite. Ah, but don't think we steal them. What happens is they can't hatch all the eggs they lay, and they give us the ones that are left over. Now, don't think the Skylark eggs are the only thing we have to eat. We have all kinds of good things. Mushrooms, vegetable soup, honey. With the help of Swift, we can find a great variety of things to eat. And if we need to take a longer trip, the wild geese are happy to give us a lift. We travel a lot, Lisa and I, in all kinds of weather. My duties keep me on the go because I'm a doctor. Good heavens, I completely forgot to tell you I'm a doctor. I'm summoned to the most remote corners of the earth because I've established a good reputation. Other gnomes can call me by telepathy, and I always go when I'm needed. Last week I was in Denmark when an urgent message came through to me. Swift and I set off at once. The patient I was hurrying to get to was a goat. She'd accidentally swallowed a jagged piece of wire with her grass and was now in great pain. The poor farmer had no money to pay a veterinarian, and she was his only goat. I was needed desperately. Hello, Good evening. Friend. Steven, thank you for coming so quickly. There isn't a minute to lose. Come on, this way. The poor worried farmer was waiting by the door to greet us. Hurry! We mustn't waste time! When I saw the poor animal, I realized she was in a very bad state. I decided to hypnotize her immediately. I knew that once she was hypnotized, she wouldn't feel any pain. Watch her. 
she starts to wake up, tell me. You hold the mic. I could tell there was internal bleeding. If I didn't get that wire out soon, she wouldn't have a chance. I wanted to be sure of what I was doing. I had to cut just beside where the wire was stuck in order to make the incision as small as possible. Ah, there's the culprit. You may think that because I've practiced medicine for such a long time, over 300 years, that I'd be pretty cool in a crunch like this. Well, that's just not so. When a life is at stake, I always suffer along with the patient. It took me about a half an hour to finish the operation. Yeah! He got it out. You can wake up the goat now. That's wonderful. You've done a great job, David. Congratulations. And I had managed to save a precious life. That's the greatest satisfaction a doctor can have. Wake up, Phoebe. You're all right now. And watch what you're eating from now on. Congratulations. A wonderful Thank job. You. When the farmer came to comfort his goat, I noticed he had tears in his eyes. Tears of happiness. We were all very glad we were able to help him. Goodbye. Goodbye, David. Thank you for home. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear friends. Best regards to Lisa! But just when I was about to leave Denmark to come home, I received another urgent message. There'd been a very unfortunate accident. Yes, I remember that, David. It was that poor badger who was in trouble, wasn't it? Exactly. This badger was just out for a stroll when he accidentally ran into a sharp-pointed stick. A splinter got stuck in his eye, and there was some danger he might lose his sight in that eye. So, of course... <sighs> I set out to help him immediately. A friendly gnome had come to guide me to the ailing badger. Here you are at last. Thank you, Swift. Where is he? At the back of the cave. His wife will show us the way. The poor animal was suffering such pain that he had hidden himself in the deepest, darkest part of his den. In case you didn't know, badgers build their homes with so many twists and turns, it's easy to get lost in them. Is it much further? There he is. See how the poor fellow is suffering? <laughs> Come on. At first glance, the situation looked pretty hopeless. But when I looked more closely, I decided it might be possible to get the splinter out without damaging the eye. I'm going to operate. I suggested to the badger that acupuncture might be a good idea, and he agreed. <laughs> Acupuncture is a science we've known about for centuries. We find it very useful. I stuck in the needles at the correct places, and bit by bit, my patient drifted off to sleep. <laughs> then I began to operate. <laughs> It was a very delicate operation, because there was a risk that in taking out the splitter, I might damage the cornea of his eye. However, that didn't happen, and the operation was successful. Bro, bro, well done, bro. Quiet. Isn't it wonderful? Then I began to sew up the wound very carefully. Oh. 
When I finished, I put lavender extract on the eye, and then I took out the acupuncture needle. I put on a bandage to keep the eye closed and to ward off any possible infection. Bravo, David. You're a wonderful doctor. Mm, thank you. It was a very delicate operation, but the eye will be saved. I told the badger's wife to keep him indoors for a few days. David, I, I want to give you something for curing. No, I wouldn't hear of it. There's no better gift than your friendship. Goodbye. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, Goodbye. David. Thank, thank you. Thank bye. you all for all your help. Remember us to your beautiful Goodbye. Wife. Goodbye. Give our regards I to will, yourself. I will, and I'll see you soon. For my long journeys, I have several different ways to travel, and always with the help of my oh, friends. Yes. For instance, it's always pleasant flying by pheasant. For traveling by water, I can count on an otter. For short trips, I make it a habit to ride on a rabbit. For long trips, Lisa and I usually go by express goose. And in the chilly north, the wolves are kind and helpful, no matter what you humans say. But sometimes traveling can be dangerous because there's some creatures in the forest who really enjoy causing trouble. They're the ugly and nasty trolls. Their idea of fun is picking on everyone else in the forest and generally raising a ruckus. Fortunately, they are also the stupidest creatures in the world, so it's easy to fool them. I know you're there. You can't fool me. <laughs> You can't get away from me! I'll get you next time! The trolls are smelly and hairy. They have long arms, short legs, and awful table manners. The worst of the lot are Pit Pat Pot and their boss Holler. I'll tie David to the wheel and spin him! In our homes, we are safe from all enemies. Before we go to bed each night, the head of the family always reads a chapter from the gnome's secret book. Then we say Schlitzweitz, which means good night. That's the only word in our language that humans are allowed to know. Schlitzweitz! I know you're going away from us now, back to your city homes leaving behind your newfound friends and the cozy world of the gnomes. But I hope you'll come back and see us. You know where to find us now, where the innocent forest children play under a leafy bough. You'll find us if you're friendly and share our point of view. But even if nobody sees us, we'll always be watching you. In the next exciting adventure of David the Gnome, you're going to meet a little witch, a spunky little magician who comes to the rescue when David and Swift are trapped by those horrible trolls. Can little Lisa find a way to fight those big, smelly bullies? Will David be trapped forever? To find out, don't miss Which Way Out, right here, next time.